Today, though, talking about uh, Kate Garraway's latest documentary about caring for her late husband, Derek, which airs tonight on ITV1. How do you feel about having a 56-year-old wife? Good. Do you? <laughs> you off, sir. Yeah. Love you. That's the moment to say it back, by the way. I do too. <laughs> oh yes, I mean, so moving. Our audience here just going, oh, and you know, she she finds the humour there as well, which Kate always seems to manage to do. Very very difficult situation. And I was reading today, she wrote an article, um, you know, talking about the documentary, and she said, you know, I obviously knew know that Derek loved me, we were in love, we were married, but obviously during his illness he couldn't really communicate. And she said, you know, the way people show love often is, you know, buy a bunch of flowers, cook you dinner, bring you a cup of tea in bed. And she said, obviously, he can't do that, no. couldn't do that. And she said she then felt unloved. And she said, I know I shouldn't because I know he loves me. But yeah. And then we were talking, that got us talking this morning about caring for loved ones. And, you know, you... For me, I've obviously got my mum who has Alzheimer's, and my dad also, who is no longer with us. But for me, it's not... When people say duty, I go, it's not even that for me. No. It's just, look, I love my mum, and I know she's always loved me, and I do what I can. I don't look after her full-time, have help. Um, but it's just what I do, because I love her. And at the moment, she knows who I am, but you think one day she might not. But I would still do it, because I, I, I take what Kate's saying, because you don't always get it back. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they start not remembering who you are, yeah. which was what happened with my dad, which is a killer. Um, but you still do it, because you think, well, they loved me, they looked yeah. after me. So I kind of get what she's saying. Um, and if you love something, you know, I've had Eamon the last two years, you know, back operation, falling down the stairs, crutches, wheelchairs, you know, um, having needing a lot of help. But that's what you do, you know, it's sickness and in health, you love yep. somebody, you're in a partnership with them, you like to think they would do the same back. Um, it's not always the case, though, Janice, is it, in relationships, cos I'm saying I have a very happy relationship with yeah. my parents and therefore I'm willing to give yes, that Yes, I see care. that. But I think everybody... Everybody has a different way of showing love. <clears throat> and it was only after my mother died I realised, well, she probably did love me, but she expressed it in such a, a, a difficult, challenging way. And as she got towards the end of her life, I would go and visit her, and it was very much like I'd go there and I'd get nothing back. And then it was only after she died I realised that Love isn't transactional. You don't, like, put £10 worth of love in and get yeah. 10 quid's worth of love back. You have to sometimes just suck it up. And now I had the same difficult relationship with my sister because, in some respects, she was jealous of my career and she had a son and she didn't uh, carry on working at the level she was working before because she was really smart and had a good job at the start, you know, in her 20s and 30s. <clears throat> and then when my sister got sick, I, without hesitation, I was there for her. I paid for her uh, operation, for um, laser scanning on her brain cancer. And um, also I encouraged her to write a diary and made sure it got published so she earned money um, because I couldn't bear the way that she was being cared for in a mixed ward on the NHS. So um, my relationship with my sister was really, really complicated, but we did love each yeah. other, but it manifested itself in... I think outsiders would have been quite shocked yeah. that even when she was really, really ill, we'd be really rude to Arguing. <laughs> arguing and but really, Andy, really rude to You've had both sides, haven't you? Because you and your sisters cared for your mum yeah. and had Alzheimer's, and then your children have looked had to after you. Me. So yeah. my mum had dementia and she was in a Marie Curie ward for five months and me and my sisters used to visit her every day. And when we got there, there'd be a big smile on her face, like she recognised us just for that minute and then there was nothing afterwards. But luckily she got to meet um, Lauren's daughter, Lila. So she loved her grandchildren, like me, mm. more than anything else. But it was a really, really hard time. We had to say, she don't drink tea, stop giving her tea. Mm. She only likes Diet Coke, she was really fussy. Um, and we actually found her in bed with someone one day. <laughs> she got in the bed with a woman in the bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> opposite. But, um, yeah, and then I had really bad mental health problems a few years ago, and then my kids were my carers for that time, and they did a really, really good job looking and after me. And how did me. you feel about that? Because sometimes it's very difficult for the person who's being cared for, yeah. if they're aware they're being cared for. Um, they sometimes feel humiliated, embarrassed, think, oh, this is just, yeah, my kids shouldn't be looking after me or my mm. wife shouldn't be looking after me. No, I did find it difficult, because I'd always been the one looking after them, and all of a sudden the roles were reversed and they were having to look after me. Um, one of them was having to stay in with me all the time to make sure I was OK, so I had really, really bad mental health mm. problems. And they were worried, really, really worried. I was actually not allowed to see my grandchildren for a little while as well, until I got better. Mm. Um, but that was four years ago now, yeah. and... Uh, and did you talk about it? You know, so we look, speak about it now, and they keep, they, they all the time me. they go to my mum, I'm so proud of you, never thought we'd get you back or anything mm. like that. So, yeah, so they sent me yeah. cards. <laughs> and Brenda, I'm saying... When you had breast cancer, obviously you needed help yeah. from your children. Yeah, I mean, you know, the surgery, I was, I was told to recuperate for eight weeks after the mastectomy and reconstruction. But for me, because I'm such a busy person, that's, that was kind of, no, I'm not going to be resting, I've got things to do. But as Janet said, you know, without hesitation, both of the kids, they immediately just says, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need? And, you know, it, I did feel very guilty with Tanisha. She was, she was 25 at the time and, you know, she's, like, the first time she's washing me and taking me to the bath, taking me to the toilet. Even mm. it, it just made me appreciate, um, appreciate yeah, yeah. it more um, because, you know, when you can't move, you, you're just left kind of... You've got to well, get over that being body. embarrassed, get over that. Uh, feeling that you're kind of uh, ashamed. I was, or... yeah. I thought that I was a burden. You know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's... Well, this is, you know, and listen, there will be so many people who are watching us today who are carers. We absolutely applaud you. Kate is doing a wonderful job, actually, in highlighting the difficulties that carers face every mm. single day or through the night, a lot of the time. Um, you can see the documentary. It's called Kate Garraway, Derek's Story, 9 o'clock tonight. It's on ITV1 and ITVX.